Gyvoji miesto kronika. Biltis stipresnė. Labą dieną visiems nužiūrintiems ir klausintiems. Šiandien aš Rimantas Navickas sveikinusi su jumis iš Salats Grįvos miestelio Latvijoje, kuris yra netoli Estijos. Ir iš čia tęsime susitikimų ir viltingų pokalbių ciklą Vilti stipresnė gyvoji miesto kronika. Trečioji pokalbių ciklo dalis kalbamės apie tikėjimo, apie reiškia dvasingumo iššūkius, kuo trūksta, kad atgyvintume ir labiau skleistume tikėjimo ir dvasingumo kultūrą. Ar religija gali būti atgyvena ir išeiti iš mados? Šiandien bus septinta diena kelionė kartu su Ajmel Samuel. Jis yra verslininkas iš Honkongo, šiuo metu yra 3000 km kelionėje, rankomis varomų dviračių iš Lietuvos į Norvegiją. Naudojasi ta galimybė, kad esu su juo kartu ir turime progą, kai už lango šiuo metu lietus, pakalbėti svarbiamis gyvenimo temomis. So, dear Mr. Ajmel, it is honor to be here with you on your challenge trip and from time to time we have uh, in our cells uh, questions uh, about the purpose of life, about the place of religion and spirituality in each life. So, can you briefly describe your childhood and the role religion played in your early years, especially with your father being a Methodist priest? Yeah, sure. First of all, thank you very much for having me here, to interview me here, on, especially on this particular topic. So, uh, just to give you a little bit of context about uh, myself and especially this particular topic about religion and life in general, I come from Pakistan. Pakistan is, uh, I'm originally from Pakistan. Of course, I'm now living in Hong Kong for the last 30 years or so. So, uh, you asked me about my childhood. Childhood was all in Pakistan, so I was born in Pakistan. And uh, we all realize and understand that Pakistan is a Muslim country. It's like 98 or 97 point something percent Muslim people. And it's a very strong Muslim country. So being a Christian in uh, Pakistan, it has its own challenges. So that means basically the day you are born, from that day onwards, you're a minority. You're, you do not have the same rights as uh, average Pakistani because you're treated differently. So having said that, uh, religion plays, played a very important role from two or, or couple of aspects for me. First of all, I'm a minority. And as a minority, you have to prove yourself a lot more than a normal average person. So you have to prove yourself to get to certain places in the society. And secondly, of course, the, the flip side of all of this is I came from a very privileged background because my father was actually Bishop, Methodist Bishop. Actually, my father was the first Pakistani uh, national local bishop of, in Pakistan. Before him, all were foreigners. So uh, that was sort of a privilege for me, but it also gave me that uh, uh, understanding into the local life of a Christian person from a privileged perspective and at the same time from a struggling from a minority perspective. So I have both sort of experiences on both both sides. So as a childhood growing uh, as a child growing up in my childhood, of course, it was a lot of struggles because I had to compete with uh, everybody else where everybody signified me or pointed me as a Christian, or oh, you are a Christian. But at the same time, I had sort of a privilege that my father was a bishop and people did respect me or did understand, oh, it, it comes from a privileged background. So that was my childhood uh, growing up in Pakistan. And at the same time, uh, going to church, going, being, because of my family's background, I grew up as a very strong 
religious strong Christian values and all that which itself is very important because having Christian values or having religious values and Christian values in a place like Pakistan which is a Muslim country it was interesting and important also because then you can identify yourself as a Christian within the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, how did your experiences both personally and professionally shape or shape your views on religion? Yeah, so uh, I've had a very long journey when it comes to religion and spirituality. So uh, at a very early age in my life, at the age of 21 or 22, 21 and a half or something like that, I had a very serious road accident, a military accident in which I had a spinal injury. That sort of changed my whole perspective and my outlook on life. Uh, again, because I came from such a strong religious family and that also strong Christian family in Pakistan and also my father was not only uh, had a role in Pakistan but he had a, both my parents, my mother and my father had a role globally in World Council of Churches and Christian Conservation, various international organizations as well. So I remember when I had my accident, there were prayer meetings all over the world. Literally, there were people praying for me in various countries all over the world for me to get better. And I, another thing which happened as a side effect of my injury was I suffered from chronic pain. So injury itself was from it's a trauma, but then lifelong chronic pain, it's trauma plus, plus, plus. So people were praying and praying and praying. And I was, I was again lucky that I was sent to hospitals in UK. I got all my treatment in UK. But one thing which always stayed with me was the pain. And it almost was debilitating to the point I couldn't function in life. So I was on a huge amounts of morphine and all, all medications. So that sort of, uh, that was something which even for me, my own spirituality and my own religious values, my own thing about being a Christian and believing in God, sort of slowly got, got started getting shaken up because I was praying, but nothing was happening. I was, everybody was praying, nothing was happening. And I was starting, in, not only in the early years, but in maybe after 15, 20 years of living in pain, I was always questioning, what is it? Why is not, nothing is there? But at the end, what I discovered and what I realized was, and that is something which made me move on in my life, was that there's only one individual who can control all the things, the good things or bad things or uh, things like pain or trauma, etc. And that is our, we ourselves. We have the capacity and of course, the people around my family, my friends and spirituality, be, believing in something that something is going to be a, able to look after you. All these things put together, but one thing, it's our will. We have the will to change something, we can do it. And that's what happened with me. So I, one fine day I decided I have to move on in life. I have to give up all my medication. I have to live with pain and I have to accept my pain and I have to move on. And that day, it was a long time ago and it's now, uh, I, I am not pain free. I live with pain every day, but it's not something which bothers me anymore. And that sort of defined my spirituality that defined my values of uh, accepting what is religion and uh, where does religion take you, etc. This is all something uh, brought me to a new, you can say a new level in my journey in life, which is, I, I'm, I'm, I can't really, at this point in time, people ask me, what is your religion sometimes? I tell them, I believe in humanity rather than one particular religion. And I, that is what really, I, from deep in my heart, that's what I believe. But I've gone through this journey and uh, when it comes, but I am very, on the other hand, because I come from a very strong Christian family, I think I'm very grounded in Christian values. It's, so it's a, it's a mix of so many things, Christian values, believing in humanity, believing in spirituality, but at the same, at the end of the day, believing in myself that I am the one who has to do things because if I help myself, 
everybody will, the universe will, God will help myself. But if I just sit there, nothing will happen. Okay. As renowned thought leader, how do you think one's personal beliefs and values are formed and influenced? How much is out of family, culture, personal experience or something else? So it's more or less like you described it here, yeah. but uh, maybe you... But, okay, so it's a, another interesting question. From my, Mike's own life experiences, I think community, which includes family, which includes uh, friends and all that, it's very important. It plays a very important role in any individual's life. Because that provides sort of a network around for people. They they understand that, okay, this is what the, uh, whatever, a network to sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, so the family, the community, the friends around them is important. But at the same time, like we, earlier on, we talked about culture and religion and all that. Culture also plays a very important role. Because if you look at most of the societies around the world, Religion is important. Religion is comes, but actually a lot of things, even in religion, are defined or shadowed by culture. So if you look, go to uh, my country of origin, Pakistan, if you go to a church, you'll find it very different from a church in Latvia. We're sitting in Latvia today or in Lithuania or in Europe because that the belief system and the church and the religion is defined by the local culture norms. You will actually find that in Pakistan, the, the Christian church and all that is very much influenced by local culture, which is Islam. So you, the, it's a very interesting how things work out. Even in China, you go to a church or you go to some Christian gathering, you'll find it's a lot influenced by Buddhism, by all of these things. So it's, that's the way uh, I think the role of uh, culture also comes into context and it plays a very important role. But all of these things together, I think very, very important culture, community, friends, family, uh, and they play a very important role in persons, how a person is put together, how a person is portrayed, or how a person leads a life. Okay, about religion's evolving role. In your observation, why do you think religion occupies less space in many people's lives today around the world compared to previous generations? Yeah, I think uh, this is passage of time. It is how, how uh, and not only passage of, passage of time, but evolution and modernity. All of these things play an important role because as life goes on, we are getting more and more uh, modern, we are getting more and more uh, uh, technically and our competence, etc. is changing completely. And we are, in the past, in the old days, there was more um, dependence on religion to define things, how things are done. But now slowly as we move on, the dependence is on technology, the dependence is on intellect, the dependence, not that it, there was no dependence on intellect in the past also, but these days the dependence is on the answers the, to a lot of questions are given by a supercomputer, are given by a person who's intellectually uh, giving you answers about time quantum and about outer space and all of that. So people are slowly getting more into that to get answers about life. But uh, there's something very s core, which is as we move along onto this side, there's something core which is missing from people's life. That is the very essence of uh, spirituality. So the spirituality, as I, I mentioned earlier, I distinguish between spirituality and religion clearly. Okay, So you can be from any religion, but spirituality in essence is the same for all the religions. So that that component is slowly going missing in our humanity. And it is that is the thing which creating, I think, a lot of question marks because people are so focused now on uh, progress. People are so focused on modern things, new things, intellectual things, technology, etc. But at the same time, 
I have to say that as I come from a religious family, I come from a, a, my father being a bishop, and I have witnessed these things firsthand on the church, how the church is uh, progressing and all that. I think church itself, in my case in, uh, in, as a Christian, the church itself has not kept up with time. I think this is another thing which on the other side, on one side things are moving so fast, on the other side the church itself is just still struggling with its identity which is a very ancient identity. They're still struggling how to actually bridge that gap and bring it to the modern times. And I think that is, they're not moving fast enough for people to actually, or to make themselves, improvise themselves, change themselves, so that they can attract more people to understand spirituality rather than just religion. I think that's something which is uh, uh, what you asked about why this is my understanding and my thinking why mm. I think so. And uh, to add on, on this, uh, uh, when the technology and modern times uh, are here and we are rapidly like taking over, when you take uh, the main values uh, of uh, the family and uh, like uh, fatherland and so on, yeah. what's left over? What do you think uh, this uh, on on this topic? Yeah, so uh, family values itself got get eroded because of the modern because we are pushed to uh, have progress all the time. So family values which were more anchored into uh, religion, okay? That is how the family unit came together and all those uh, things. That is slowly getting eroded because we are so focused on, oh, we need to get some more things and get modern stuff and intellectual stuff and all that. So we are sort of forgetting that the core values which were given to us by religion, or that is, moving away. I, I'll quote one example and I hope I do not get uh, victimized for that, but I, I, I'm, I'm Chinese by, by nationality now, okay? And people ask me, I, I have traveled in China a lot, and uh, people ask me, what is, many people who do not understand China, they ask me, what's the religion of China? Because, oh, it's made a lot of progress, so many things, good things. And I always tell people, the religion of China is a dollar, it's money. And that is a dangerous, dangerous thing. And that is the trend which is happening globally. Because there is no real religious values to anchor. When the minute your religious values or your, your values in life become material, uh, destroying the society. And that is what's happening not only in China, but China is I witnessed firsthand, but it's happening all over the world. Slowly, our, our values are based on something material rather than something spiritual. And that is, to, I think, to answer to your question. Yeah. yeah. And uh, about uh, the same values, uh, uh, Ajmal, there, there is a compelling story I recently had about an injured Ukrainian soldier who had a profound transformation. After returning from the brink of death, he chose the path of a chaplain. He held the view that was a cue when teachers in schools and priests fell to do their duties. Given uh, your father's role as a Methodist uh, bishop and your own unique journey, how does this perspective resonate with you? I think it's... Uh, uh, I totally understand. And uh, I am maybe I, I what I have explained in this interview today. Maybe I'm not a spiritual, not a religious person, but I'm a spiritual person. So even for me, I consider myself as I, it totally resonates with me. I, many people talk to me, and I bring them to the point where they become spiritual rather than they have no idea what's going on and then suddenly oh yeah we need to actually there is because there's a lot of merit to it there's a lot of deepness into all of this you have to really understand the depth of what is spirituality what is inside you that's life and life is not just oh we are here we're born we are dying no 
there's a whole journey and then you have to understand the surroundings around you, you have to understand why you're here, who are the people around you in all that context. So I totally understand how this guy has a life-changing experience and he wants to be a chaplain now. He wants to be, be able to able to lead a flock or he able to share his experiences. It's more, uh, uh, from my experience, I think it's more to do with sharing your life experiences because you get to a point where you under, start understanding life. And I think his, his injury or, or his, uh, his venture into the war sort of brought him to a point that he understands the subtlety of life because he has been through a lot of trauma. So now he wants to share and help other people as well. Okay, and uh, you said also talking to your uh, people around and made some changes for them. Uh, and uh, maybe you have some there is like that there is time for the people and you talk, talked about the dollar yes that religion yeah. is dollar and uh, there is some certain periods of time of a life over one's person that he begins to question it yeah and uh, so mm, what uh, starts it like uh, what's uh, when it's happening what is the reason that uh, one is starting to question it yeah so i have a uh, i say this thing in many of my interviews and i have a saying which is very harsh but this is the way life is uh, it sort of ties back to your question adversity is the best teacher in life okay it's not a good thing we have to go through some really bad and tough times and that is a time either we come above the water or we drown. If we come above the water, we start questioning things. We start understanding what is happening around us. And that is a time where we realize, oh, that my affiliation to dollar is not right. My affiliation to humanity is more important. So that is the time where we have gone through hell, hell, and then we realize, okay, and not, I, I, it's not easy to say, oh, everybody should go through hell, but that is really the transformation. This is how people get transformed. And that is the essence of sometimes, I can say the essence of life, that we, we start off all, if we just go through a bed of roses throughout our life, we won't understand anything. And uh, does it change one's life? Yeah, it changes one's life completely, completely, because then suddenly you realize that, hey, I have uh, now I, I'm not, I'm not stuck with one particular ideal, which is just dollar, which is going to, yeah, it's going to give you pleasure, it's going to give you worldly things and all that, but inside it's missing, something is missing. And the, uh, from, again, from my experience, the worldly things are not that important. The more important thing is how content you are, how much of a smile you have on your face, real, real smile and content you are, rather than having a world, uh, just having a big bank balance or having a nice car or nice house. That's not important. Of course, it's important to be in this world, but that is not what will give you the contentness in life. Something deep inside is something completely different. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. uh, we talked about a bit uh, of this question. Uh, do you think the diminishing role of religion in uh, people's lives has been replaced with something else? Perhaps a different kind of spirituality, values or belief systems? Yeah, uh, I think uh, even my example, uh, so that I distinguish between religion and spirituality. So the people who really figure out that there is something, they figure out their own inner spirituality. Maybe they are not that religious. Maybe, uh, may it be Christian or Buddhist or, or Muslim or whatever, it doesn't matter. But they are spiritual people. They are good people. They believe in humanity. They believe in being good, good to each other. And I think that is something in my humble opinion, that is something which is more important in this time than 
just being purely uh, religious and uh, of course if you are if you get to that point that you understand what is spirituality life is already very different mm-hmm. how do you reconcile traditional religious beliefs with a rapidly evolving world especially in the realms of science technology and society societal shifts Yeah, I, I think I already mentioned yeah. that the uh, let's just stick to Christianity. That the church itself has not been able to keep up with what is happening in the world. So the world is moving so fast, and it's very difficult to reconcile these two together because the church itself has not come up with the way to deal with the younger generation or even older generation and their understanding about. the universe they understanding about what how things are moving now we have a very very scientific empirical understanding as opposed to the old days when it was more of a religion thing so i think it's a job for both sides to to understand each other and to bridge the gap and to come together mm-hmm. okay uh, societal perspective uh, in your travels and interactions across the globe Have you noticed the reg- uh, regional differences in how religions is perceived and practiced? Can you share some insights about it? Yeah, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, if you go to my current country of origin, Pakistan, if you go to a church in Pakistan, you'll be surprised because the church in Pakistan is very much more Middle Eastern sort of a religious thing rather than European. many come people who come actually i i i have many christian friends who find it very difficult to understand how can a person in europe go to a church and practice christianity the way they do i have been asked many times what is this this is not christianity so this is like it's an interesting thing because it's at the end of the day it's the same religion it's the bible but they have two different ideas because that is defined by the culture not by the religion itself given your entrepreneurial ventures do you think the world of business has any lessons to offer about the role of values ethics and perhaps even spirituality okay so uh, actually there are two couple of things when you're an entrepreneur in my own experience you cannot exp- you cannot succeed if you don't have a very solid human element to yourself and to your people and to your business which human element translates directly to your beliefs your your values and where do the values come from in my opinion in my humble opinion again values come from a particular understanding of religion okay so i'm christian i have christian values and that is what helps me to de- my team when i'm dealing with my team it is the values which i'm putting together is my christian values which i'm putting together i i realize it or not it's a different story altogether but that is how the team is built okay i have had instances uh, whereby i have been with other teams where they just go crazy they can't succeed because they are not is simple stuff they're not being nice to each other they're not really understanding how to grow further and further and further which comes from spirituality which comes from religious values which become some core human values and the human values come from our spiritual understanding so i think entrepreneurship business and all that they all f- take values from our religious values and that's where it's a little confusing because i said religion and that yeah. but it's the human values maybe human values are more important they that's where they are able to ex- excel uh, uh, excel otherwise they cannot excel and this is if you take any big businesses or start especially startups or new businesses or small businesses that's how they succeed okay uh future outlook Where do you see the intersection of religion, personal beliefs, and society heading in the next decade? It's a very difficult question to answer because, as I have mentioned already, that 
the church itself is not doing very well to move things forward. But at the same time, if we look around the world today, we see there is a lot of alternative values or religion which is coming up. People are practicing more sort of uh, meditation. People are practicing because at the end of the day, they all need that uh, sustenance into their spirituality. So I think that thing which is not anchored into religion, but is anchored into spirituality and humanity is slowly taking over rather than going to the church. If you go to a church these days, you'll hardly find people there. Okay. So, but you talk to some, many of the people, they are very, they have good values and all of that. And then you slowly talk to them, understand them. You realize, oh, they are practicing some alternative. They're more into humanity. They're more into spirituality rather than into religion. And I, I, I fear that going forward, that is what is going to be taking over. But at the same time, I'm very cognizant of the fact that religious values are very important coming, growing up from that. So in that, in that context, so having that uh, idea about um, religion, which is teaching me some values about good and bad and all, that's important, very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, following this, uh, there is a, also like uh, as the values very important and one inside uh, is missing something there, is, there comes the time but yeah. i feel that i'm missing something yeah. and i've heard that uh, the churches are getting back people in usa yeah. so yeah. Uh, there are some changes on that uh, perspective so just uh, as a uh, just yeah, my, yeah. my my, yeah, my yeah, thoughts yeah. about it and what i've had okay uh, what advice would you give to young people today struggling with their own religious identities or search for a personal belief system? I think they need, uh, okay, for young people, it's important to look back into their, into their uh, families, into their history, into whatever, because most of the, most of the people, they come from a certain, maybe it's Islam or Christianity or whatever, okay. Uh, they have to look back into who they are, what is their identity. And I think this is the step number one. So the minute they figure out what is their identity, then, or maybe sometime even atheists, okay. Maybe they're two generations, three generations, atheists, but figure out what is their identity and then take the next step. Understand how to utilize that as a platform to make them more understanding humanity. What is what is happening around us? I, I think the whole idea right now is to address these tough issues in a different way, not from a typical classical uh, church or Christian way, but it's in a slightly different way. And that is, I think, more important for a young person to understand and to have, to have uh, I think humanity is very important. They need to understand how to behave with their fellow people, young people. And for that, they need to understand what is humanity, what is spirituality. And I think uh, maybe it's too early to say for young people spirituality, but at least the minute they understand what is humanity, the next step or maybe, I don't know, five, ten years later, they understand spirituality. They'll understand what's inside them and what needs to come out, whereby they understand spirituality as well. Okay, we're coming to an end. And uh, about uh, your family. Uh, maybe you have already answered part of it, but how does your family re religious background still continues to influence your personal values, even if non-traditional ways? I think my fam family itself, that whole unit of family, and then given the fact that I come from a very religious family, uh, it till today, and it is an interesting thing which I have mentioned earlier, that because I'm from a Muslim country, I'm from Pakistan, and I'm Christian. So identity is so very important. Everybody, because everybody's Muslim. So I have to make sure that everybody knows, even my name, Ajmal Samuel, Victor Samuel, is Christian. So I have to make sure that 
this is my identity. People know that, oh, this is guy is a Christian guy. So that already instills in me, uh, takes me up on my own personal level. But at the same time, my family, of course, they're what I have been brought up, what I have been put together and what who I am today, it is all because of, uh, goes back to my family. And till today, it plays a very important role. My, met, my father, he passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I used to have this debate with him all the time about religion, about understanding of religion and about understanding of my situation. And, till, and my father was a very, very intellectual, open person. So he would understand where I'm coming from. And I have this debate with my mother also till today, who who's, lives with me. And she, she sort of understands where's my, because they've been through the journey with me. And my mother is somebody who's very, very strong Christian um, to an extreme. In the morning is Bible study, in the afternoon Bible, in the evening Bible, things like that. So, and church and all of that. So, uh, but I, I totally understand what she comes from and I, I totally support her and she totally supports me in all my ventures. Yeah. So that's my relationship with my family and then understanding me and me understanding them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, one more about mm -hmm. the uh, future. Look, looking ahead to your future challenges, mm -hmm. You mentioned one endeavor stands out is your desire to follow the life roads of Jesus. Can you share with us why this journey is important to you and that significance it, it holds in your personal and spiritual development? Yeah, so from, from my point of view, it's a little bit of a personal journey, okay? Because as I mentioned, I grew up as a very strong Christian background, Christian family. But at the same time, for me, the way I treat Bible, uh, I do not want to be uh, saying wrong things here. But the way I treat Bible is sort of a book which gives, which has given me meaning in life. Okay, it is more than just a religious book for me. It is more; it's my spiritual guidance. Although I, I, I mentioned very openly that I'm not that religious anymore, I'm more spiritual. So for me, I find it very, it's one of my bucket list or one of my things to do. I want to go and see the journey of Jesus Christ. I want to see the journey in the Bible, that how, where, what happened. And it is more on the historical side and then putting that historical perspective into my life. I think that is something which I look forward will provide sort of a completion to a lot of questions which I have in life and that will under, uh, make me understand, oh, okay, this is where I, this is what I was thinking, this is what it is and this is how it all comes together as finally I have been on the same journey, I understand. So that, that I think is more my quest, internal quest that I need to know, I want to know. I have read the book, I understand the book, I have those values, I want to know that that uh, person, where he went, what he did, how he did, and the places, and then put that into context with my life and try to make something out of it. That's my, that is why I am so much that I want to follow that. Okay, it's nice. Mr. Samuel, thank you sincerely for sharing your insights and experiences today. Your perspectives has been both enlightening and inspiring. I deeply appreciate your time and hope we can converse again in the future. Thank you very much for having me here. Thanks a lot. Press there.